another important skill for us to have a good connection with in doing a physics class is trigonometry. There's not a lot that I uh, want to review about this, but I do want to get some important facts out of the table. Many of us learned basic trigonometry by looking at the circle. So if one has a circle centered at the origin, it might look like that. This circle may have a radius r. And if we take any particular point along this circle, then that particular point projects down to have an x-coordinate Let's call it A, and a Y coordinate, which we'll call B. As this point moves further and further around, there's an angle that's included here between the, the that little radius and the x-axis, and that angle starts at zero and sweeps up larger and larger until it gets all the way around and becomes 360 degrees. The sine of that angle is defined as a ratio. It is defined as B over R. The cosine of this angle is defined as A over R. tangent for this angle is B over A. There are other trigonometric functions like the cosecant and the cotangent and the uh, secant. These include things like secant theta is 1 over cosine theta or cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta, or cotangent theta is 1 over tangent theta. But the important thing is to remember this acronym. Which I think I have right. So the sine is the opposite over this radius, which is sometimes called the hypotenuse. The cosine is defined as the adjacent side over that hypotenuse, and the tangent is defined as the opposite over the adjacent. Now it's generally true that you can plug angles into these functions, 20 degrees, 50 degrees, and so on, and compute what is that value for cosine of theta or sine of theta, but it's helpful to have better, a little bit of a memory about what some of these things are. So for example, if theta is 0 degrees, or 30 degrees, or 45 degrees, or 60 degrees, or 90 degrees. These are some, some angles for which it's useful for you to know the values of the standard, standard trig function. When theta is very small and goes to zero, then this side b goes to zero, and the sine of that angle is zero. However, this uh, adjacent side, as this point moves around and around to the circle, circle over here, the adjacent side becomes just the radius. And so this cosine becomes 1. The tangent is just defined really as the sine over the cosine. And so this becomes 0. At 90 degrees, the opposite is true. At 90 degrees, this little vector or this uh, radius is moving all the way up to here and it's located right at that spot, top of the circle. In which case, uh, psi b is equal to r in length and the sine is equal to 1. The 
cosine will be zero because this side, this location A moves back in toward the origin. And actually, the tangent becomes infinite. In between, how do we remember how to calculate these things? Well, we use Pythagorean's theorem. And we remember that for any of these angles, this coordinate a squared plus that sign b squared equals r squared. And that's because this is a right triangle. And that allows us to find out things like this is 1 over root 2, this is 1 over root 2, and this is 1. And for 30 degrees, the sine of theta is a half. The cosine of theta is root 3 over 2. And the tangent, which is sine over cosine, is 1 over root 3. 60 degrees looks a lot, it's very similar to this 30 degrees. It's just that instead of being down here more, at that point you're even like over there, it's flipped over on the other side of 45 degrees. So these two things switch places. This becomes root 3 over 2, this becomes a half, and, this, and the tangent becomes root 3. So I don't expect you to memorize the values of the trigonometric functions for all possible angles. In fact, it's really hard to do that. Uh, but for some of these key angles, it's very, very useful to be able to call those up from memory.